All right guys, it's a really cold and frosty morning. I've just seen something really cool that I want to show you. Check this out. Frozen spider webs on the car. Anyway, I'm off to a fruit and nut village event. It's the winter pruning workshop and uh, we'll show you how to prune a tr an apple tree. All right guys, I'm at the Kingdom Forest Garden and I'm going to show you around a bit. Uh, so the guys are up that end starting on the pruning workshop on a, a young tree. Um, some people come along who want to learn how to uh, look after their own trees and that, that's um, you often get a few people like that who want to come and get the knowledge and um, the, the garnet goes all the way up to this other end it's absolutely huge now and it's come all the way out to the to the footpath you can see the footpath here it's just on public land and um, there's things like um, berry bushes here that looks like it might be a really big gooseberry because of the shape of the leaf and it's got a, a big spike so there are just beds of um, of berries and there's we'll find some strawberry there we go there's just some strawberries over there strawberries down there and they spread very quickly and then there's hello you're freezing freezing <laughs> And there's uh, red currants, white currants. These will be uh, a currant bush. Can't really tell what they are until maybe they fruit, but maybe black currant. It's got quite a distinctive stem there. And then more strawberries, and there's a, a bed of strawberries over there. And then these look like raspberries over here. Yeah, there's yellow raspberries and red raspberries. There's a huge berry bush here. Look at it. So raspberries there with their leaves just about still on. And then we've got all these really established apple trees here. It's a beautiful frosty morning. It's about 10 o'clock, half past 10. And you can see videos of this uh, in the summer actually and all the fruit that, that it holds. Oh wow, so this is a huge apple tree here. Uh, it doesn't go too high, but you can see all this vertical growth. See here, it's just going straight upwards. So when we're pruning today, we're pruning these apple trees, uh, we'll be having a look at that because vertical growth won't um, be holding any fruit, won't be developing any fruit spurs. This looks like more another raspberry there. That looks like maybe oregano or marjoram something like that and there's so there's herbs around here I've seen mint um, there's perennial vegetables as well here we go here's some um, cabbage actually I call this one the ma magic cabbage I recognize it from it's sort of purpley purpley stem and there's a, a bay tree up there there. It's getting established. So just below, uh, where you cut back to, there should be a little collar of wood that will just keel back over there. So we cut close to the, the cut close to the stem, but not right up to it. So the first cut there, first cut of the day. And then you want me to just lean down here and do this one. So this one we think is potentially diseased, so again I'm putting the thin blade against there. It's a bit hard with the cage in place, so I might be able to do it. So not too close, and then we collect all the material, they're inspecting the material. So that bit had uh, some canker on it, a bit of disease, and we put these cages around to stop any vandalism. It does happen, and the do dogs can go after them as well. <coughs> I mean, that, I was going to take that bit off anyway, probably because, as I was saying, we're trying to manage it into the, in the cage. Mm -hmm. So something that we'll probably need to do is remove some of this lower wood. I might let someone else have a go there, um, Karen. When I have 
go at see I'm happy to remove that and that and that and that just because they, they're trapped in the cage really so we don't really need that they've, they've, it's got its roots set now it's been here for two years so all so, of these so those four we could take them all off okay. so you're looking for four good branches uh, that's the sort of thing you're aiming yeah. at you won't get exactly four but you want it you you don't they're going to be useless the in the yeah, long yeah. term you don't want so many they'll get disease because they're going to rub on this as they yeah. get bigger next year and they'll just be a problem so if you haven't got a cage drone would you still take the bottom well then you can decide really yeah you can decide what's best but i probably would yeah. because i've just uh, got stuck in the way of thinking that trees should be standard <laughs> and half standard yeah <laughs> So. I don't know how I'm going to reach it though. Um, I know exactly how you're going to reach well, that, it. Am I going to undo this bit? No. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get the light. <laughs> the current? No. I'm going to go underneath. Yeah. Am I going underneath? Yeah, okay. but you don't do it like that. <laughs> 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 I'm going to you you try to... laying on the floor and sticking your arm. <laughs> Is that what I'm going to do? Is that well, why I've got these lower ones? Uh, yeah, because you can't get the lockers okay. in there. No, that's to get these in. They can't be opened up wide enough to do it, so that doesn't usually work going in there with them, especially lower down. So the only way to do it, the patented technique, is lying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to demonstrate. We're trying right, to get these right, lower right. branches We've got in the cage. Light. <laughs> sometimes you yeah. can't reach in very well, but yeah. Well, I've got so you, small you... arms. Work. <laughs> got... Well right. done. If you put a cage around a tree, you always need a bit of a gap underneath. <laughs> oh, it's not really close enough. That's a very bad one, but never mind. Uh, so would anyone like to go on the next one? I do. Yeah. It's just a, a weird technique we have to adopt. So while we're here as well, you should fiddle around with these because they can get humidity underneath them. Really <laughs> Uh, yeah, it looks a little bit nearer. A bit nearer, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Try and use further down, not just the tip. <laughs> I think it's good. It's better if you can. You probably get a cut there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then this. You might be able to reach that from the top. Who wants to go for next? Susan, don't Susan go next. If you can get it. Longest arms. I think you'll be able to reach those. I think you'll be able to reach from this side. You come and stand here. You go on the right side. Why don't you get further? Yeah, that's Need longer arms. That's quite far, <laughs> isn't it? It's <laughs> 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 lower. <laughs> Struggling to reach wow. that one. Slippery. Yeah, if you're getting further down that. Yeah. Oh, that didn't go quite so far. Yeah, you're probably too far along the, the tip. It's not quite, you need about an inch taller. <laughs> So we're getting on with pruning that tree and um, teaching people what to do on the smaller ones because they've got smaller the smaller fruit trees in their gardens and um, we'll move on to some of the bigger ones in a little while as well and I'll show you what we're doing there and some of the general techniques uh, and principles of pruning. Go on. So the first thing is the dead, diseased, damaged and dying wood. Uh, the second thing we're looking at is maybe shape that prevents any disease getting in the future. And then the next thing we want to do is look at crossing wood and inward facing wood. So if you get inward facing wood in the middle of your goblet, that's going to start crossing. So we keep it open like this and the parts that are going in, we take off. That would be very bad on your tree. So we, do, we also have got a little bit of rubbing on there. So what I'm going to do to remedy that is cut it back to the next bud just to prevent the rubbing. Well, oh, there's not a very good bud there. So when you're looking for a bud to cut to, you need to find an outward facing one. So you see this here? If we cut just above that, 
it's going to grow in this direction, which is what we want. So if you cut, if you just do a random cut, you'll probably get a little stub and a bit of disease get in. But if you cut it to the wrong bud, if you cut them all to the inward facing buds, you'll just get a mess yeah. of tree growing inwards, which is the opposite of what all the books say. So um, this, anyway, this is the last one. We're We've looked for dead, disease, damage, and morning. die. Oh yeah. Monday we've, morning. We've come done early. the. What? Sorry. Monday morning. No, Monday morning is still coming. We're going to have Monday morning as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here. <laughs> you get confused then for a minute. Uh, so dead, disease, damage, dying. Checking the rootstock, making sure that there's nothing growing from it. Sometimes the rootstocks grow over here. They shoot around the area, oh. mm. and then we are looking at preventing future entry points for disease. I said I was going to cut this, but then I couldn't find a good outward facing bud. But I'm going to try, I'm just going to go for it anyway. Love that one there. So it's not rubbing on the cage. <coughs> so there's no contact with the cage. We're looking for inward facing wood. This is where people's minds sometimes get a bit blown. <laughs> Can you see any inward facing wood? Yeah. No, they're the buds. Oh, so we haven't done this them. yet, have we? So they're the fruit buds. Oh, okay. So the leaf buds yeah. you get on one year old wood. This one's inward facing. I don't like that one. But it could be outward facing. Yeah, it could be. Outward. But it's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the middle. <laughs> so, this one looks like it's going. So yes, yeah, mm. have a look at the, the buds again. So this tree hasn't got a lot of fruit buds on. It's quite young. And they tend to be lower so down because it's older wood. So if you look at the new wood, it's grown this year. And they seem to put on quite a lot of growth, these trees, from down mm, here. Yeah. yeah, all that's all that, if you look at it, there's no big sticky out fruit buds on it. Whereas down here there is a fruit okay. bud. That's that's the cut from last year. So it's done all this growth, there's quite a lot of growth. It's grown from there. So they've done well. So another thing we're going to do at the end is just maybe slow some of that growth down, try and encourage it to be a bit more outward facing. So I well I do agree with the uh, cameraman <laughs> so that is one we could remove but what are you what are you seeing as the future shape of the tree at the moment do we have a leader yeah that's probably the leader <laughs> <laughs> that's the leader so what are these doing maybe these are part of the future shape I mean, in the, these are kind of backups really, so in the future we might decide that we just have these temporary points and maybe next year just chop it off here. Okay. We might lose them next year. But at the moment I don't think we need to make that decision. What's this one doing? Well, it's a good question, should we chop it off? Yeah, because it <laughs> doesn't look like it's going straight. And it's bendy as well, yeah. twisty bits like that are not the best. So where would you want to cut that off and why? Oh, would, would we go into this corner but get us? No, would we just take it from there, leaving that bit on? But it does look like it's already been cut there, and that was a new bit of Okay, so we'll leave them to be getting on with their pruning, and we've learnt a few things there. Um, you start off by walking around your tree and look for anything that's dead, diseased, or dying, and snip it off. And also anything that's coming out of the rootstock. So a tree is grafted onto a rootstock, and if you can see there at the very bottom, that's where the where it was grafted. And so below that graft line, you don't want anything growing. And then they were talking about cutting back to certain buds. So whenever possible, you want to cut back to an outward-facing bud. So this bud is facing outwards. And so if you cut as close as you can to it, there, then the tree will start growing outwards and you'll get like a, an outward facing branch and it just helps to, excuse me, to shape it um, really well. They're talking about anything that's on the growing in, on the inside of the tree. So for example, this is growing toward the center. If it was a bit longer, in fact, it does look like that was possibly pruned in a previous year, not necessarily close enough. But there's not a mu much on this tree to show you, but we'll go, I'll show you on some bigger ones in a bit, some of the decisions that we can make. 
about what you chop off and what you don't and the reasoning behind it. All right. <laughs> All of that? No, just the last thing. So the, the next thing after that is removing any inward facing wood. And I think a lot of that work over there will be taking the inward facing wood off. So if we've got a reasonable shape on these trees, we've looked at them for eight years now. This one's just been in the ground for two years. So it's having its formative pruning. So the last thing I'd like to do with this one, especially since it's a pear, to discourage it from growing vertically. We're going to bring back some of the new growth to a nice outward facing bud, about maybe a third the way down. But we'll try and balance the height a little bit as well. So maybe this one a little bit more off so we don't get uh, too much dominance on that side. Because the way the uh, tree works it has a lot of the growth hormones at the end, obviously, because it's going to grow. And if you cut that back a little bit, it'll slow the growth. Will that then come off? And then, yeah, if we have them outward facing, so if you cut to that bud there, it's going to grow more this direction. Rather Whereas if you leave them, they really tend strike. to go upwards. And that's it, really. Okay. And then, so that's formative pruning. This is new, and you don't want the pears to grow yet. Will you um, remove those when they... Yeah, or you can remove the flowers. Okay, I oh, was going to ask yeah. yeah, so mine are new for the year, so I want to remove the flowers. First two years, definitely, you want to just think about the roots, keep okay. them watered and mulched. They did um, all just drop off yeah, before they were... Yeah, you don't want the fruits, it's just a waste of energy. Yeah. The tree. So don't let that happen, and then maybe as it starts to get like four or five years, you can have one or two fruits. But yeah. For the first ten years, really, you're just growing the tree. Yeah. It's okay. going to be here, hopefully, for more than a hundred years. So the first ten years, it's like a kid. <laughs> So maybe, you know, kids can maybe Won't have an apple for 10 years. But, yeah, <laughs> kids are not allowed to um, have their own kids when they're 10 years yeah. old. So yeah. same with the tree. Yeah. And then when are you going to let the let That's going to be a nice first apple, isn't it? Uh, worth waiting for, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I'm just thinking of my poor pear trees. <laughs> and if they were expected to live for however many years... Oh, they live longer. Now, pear trees yeah. live longer. Oh, but the state of them now is like... Oh, they need a lot of recovery. I actually think I'm going to chop that one down. Mm. Can cut yeah, on it. and if they're too closely planted, that's yeah. worth thinking about because that spreads disease. Yeah, they are yeah. spread out enough, but I think it's just they've just been neglected. Yeah. Right. Who wants to find these outward? You've got the mm. secateurs. If you want to find a nice, we could discuss which points we're going to cut down to. So what would you do? Take about a third off the top Usually about of the new third, growth? Sometimes less, sometimes a bit more. If they're very vigorous, sometimes do a half. I, I think that's a bit low, that one. That's I'd go where for it started a, growing. I'd so go for a little bit thing above is just oh, yeah. one year's growth. Yeah, something like that. That's quite a good one. I'd, that's what I'd go for, I think. But yes, before you cut, wait a minute, you've got your secateurs upside down. So you might find it easy, I think, if you stand oh, where I was. Oh, and then twist your hand a little bit. You can bend this though if you want, if it's not very good angle you can just do that, just don't bend it too far. Right, and then we can cut the other two to roughly the same height, and something similar on the other side. So this one's been brought down from here. This one's in there. This one's one here, yeah, I've pointed it up. One yeah. Here, I think we should step it up. I think we should get the proper one more time. Well, yeah, so. we need to get a move on, we need to do some real work. <laughs> <laughs> Too much talk. Are we thinking that this one looks nice? Yeah, that looks a good height, yeah. You go a little bit low if you want to balance it more. But... Morning. Morning, Ruth. Morning. You've done this before, well, I haven't do you? One. Yes. Do you want these doing as well? Yeah. You going where? You want these doing as well? I thought it says looking after the shop. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, I think a bit off those as well. And we'll clean the that tools one? and we'll go to a big tree. 14 year old tree, not a 4 year old tree. <coughs> That's good. I need to get a photo of him doing that. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Should I do the last one? Or just you want to do it? Really yeah. slow. Yeah, you do it. <laughs> get your phone shot. I'd have to leave that one, but um, that one maybe. Yeah. I'm now thinking when I look at it, the one I did needs to come down a little bit. Yeah, I did this one. I can make this one some more if you want. <laughs> you can always take a bit more off. No, I think that's alright. Chuck it in the woods. 
There we go. So that's the initial tutorial for the guys, for the new people. And uh, the first tree sort of pruned and a lot of thinking about theory and what you have to do. And we're going to um, go on some of, some of the big ones now and, and, and split up into pairs and get pruning. Okay, we're at a bigger tree now. Have a look. Oh, that, that's water shoots. So they have to just go. They're like yeah. the inward facing wood, really, yeah. Oh, These water are water shoots. shoots. What are they called water shoots? Uh, I don't know, actually. Well, what's happened here last year, I think someone's just removed some inward facing wood here. So they're this year's, they're all this year's growth. It's and they're just cuttable because they're just about finger sized. If they get over finger sized, then um, yeah. you have to cut your thumb off with them. So loppers, <laughs> loppers is the next thing up. So this is just about secateur size. Just. How are you feeling about the other ones coming off off the big branch by your, by your face as well? Mm. By the side? Up here. Mm. Have a look. Yeah, that looks inward facing, uh, that one. Yeah, so look at the inward facing for one thing. You've got <coughs> quite a few of those. Come this off, can all you? go. Yeah. This here. Yeah, so it's meant to be clear in the middle, so standing in the middle, it's quite a good place. Put it some there, that's probably. Sometimes. Go. <laughs> so a lot of this, if it's been cut off last year and regrown, you probably just want to do the same thing. Really. Um, so we're looking for disease still, looking for death. This bit's disease actually, oh, you can see why. It's been snapped off down there. So we're looking for dead, diseased, and dying first. There was a little snapped off branch. So it takes a while to do one tree. You, you just walk all the way around. Just fiddling about. I think we, we need to start doing some dead as Yeah, you'll find lots of bits. Don't here we go. So we found our first bit of damage here. Well, that I've got on camera. So this, this is just snapped up. So it's best to do that first of life. Thank you. So dead, disease, dying. Take that off as close as you can. So if there's a big problem there, it needs to be dealt with early on. And then once so you've this, done that... See these, this branch here? Oh yeah, don't be right round. It's just, probably just needs the lopper there to chop it off. There's wow. another one doing that. That one he yeah. just touched, it's it's so inward growth, it's, it's so touching other things up there. In, so, maybe we'll so we're looking at inward facing growth. And that. <laughs> we're yeah, at be a bit things that are rubbing, that are touching other things. So yeah, that when, needs when to come off and here. Off and look at it because we don't want to take too much off. So there's quite a lot if you're doing a big job, you've got quite a lot to do on this tree. I'm just taking off some downward facing well, wood. So if it's going down. So over here, can we see anything we don't like the shape of? This is a bit of a mess. So what would you take out of there? To... Yeah, <laughs> So if we get that out of the middle, I've got them on really long now, I shorten them to the be. So these are too big for the secateur, so we'll get that in there. So that's going through the middle and rubbing on all sorts and um, just being cluttered really and make space between yeah, the branches. Imagine when they've got leaves on, this is without leaves. Oh, so are we going to go to this one rather than taking this one off? Well, probably, yeah, because you said it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got that long to think about no, it. Exactly. This one don't think, otherwise, yeah, down. sometimes you just need to do it. Mm. And that's going to touch that one, but this one's downward facing. Yeah, yeah so the downward facing one. Well, I, I don't like this one because it's going that angle, yeah. but this one's growing more outward from the tree. I'd prefer it if that was growing that way, but it's not. So you don't have to remove the whole thing, because there's fruit on here. So you could just take it back to, maybe to there. You could do that with the secateurs. Kind of you could just take it back to there. Still use the bit of wood. Um, not happy with this one. Oh yeah, that's not right, is it? Deal with that somehow. What would you want to do with that? I don't, I think I want it back. Yeah. I was, I think you could, you could going to make fruit too. You could have, you could keep some of so they're just looking at uh, a branch that's sort of growing into another one. So there's a lot of, where they're making contact with each other, you can snip a bit of one off. You don't have to snip it all the way back, you can just snip it halfway down.
Like found a really like interesting bit of um, damage on this tree. Check it out. <laughs> What's this? This branch. It's a big branch and it's cracked all the way through. I think someone said it was just, uh, they think it was kids um, hanging on the branch. And um, I'll show you a zoomed out. Take it all off. So it's this branch that comes out is quite a significant part of the tree, isn't it? So, um, and this tree has a lot of, lot of bolt upright growth. I don't know if you can see it. So we need to take out, out a lot of that vertical growth in there. And we'll just have a walk around this tree, the, the working on that previous tree we had a look at. We'll just have a little walk around. Here's some uh, rubbing branch there. That's in contact, so we'll take that off to an outward facing bud or just all the way down and that's the decision you have to make. And I'll show you, show you another example of an outward facing bud. For example here, if we're, if we're trimming down this new growth to encourage fruit spurs, then you take the top third off and then you look for your first outward facing bud. So there's an outward facing bud here and then the next one is yeah, down there. So look for your outward facing buds. There's crossing branches here. So you'd have a, a bit of a decision to make. It's this one coming back here. So you have to decide where you take it back to. And then things like inward, inward growing, well, that's just growing vertical inward amongst everything. And then thing, things that are, are on the trunk, little, little ones. Uh, this one. He's just taken off some inward facing growth there. And then anything dead disease or die. Yeah, and that, that new growth would have come from taking off something big and the tree responding. Um, and you see that damage in there as well. But it looks like it lost its main leading branch and it's at some point chucked out a big leader to replace it. So when you take off when you take off too much growth on a on a tree in one go, the tree will respond by sending up a, a load of new growth. Um, or it, yeah, it might have been might have been damaged and we had to take something big off. But um, it's got a lot of big vertical growth. So you want to take off a lot of that vertical growth. Never take off more than about thirty percent of the tree. Don't take too much off because it can be a big shock. Uh, look, here we go. We've got our first bit of diseased and damaged, maybe. I mean, it looks like it was damaged and then got diseased. There's a split, so we could probably take that off all the way back. There's a bit of, of rubbing here. There's uh, this one. A bit of damage and disease. And then you can, yeah, here we go. A bit more damage there. That snapped off. Dead, diseased, and dying. Just going through these raspberries, and I don't know what that is. It's a, a berry bush of some sort, maybe a, a black currant, oregano. So a mix of berries and herbs there. Here we go. A bit more damage here as well. So a little bit of damage on the outside of the tree, and it might just be, you know, people rubbing past it when they're walking their dogs or. Um, or the, the dogs themselves. Um, another thing that's important is that anything that you're cutting off, put in a, put in a pile, all these have been trimmed off. Yeah, yeah. All the waste wood you want to get rid of, don't just leave by the tree. Collect it up at the end, because um, that can promote disease as well. And, um, Darren, I'll give you some more. He's just cleaned those with a, an alcohol solution. So in between trees, in between trees, clean off your tools uh, with an alcohol solution so you don't spread disease. All right, sun's come out and um, we're just sawing through a branch, taking it off. What's the reasoning behind taking this branch off? We're taking the leader off. 
it, it, taking off the leader. Yeah. Okay. Too high. Too high. Going too high. Okay. So I've just come over to this tree because uh, they were having a, an exciting moment sawing a branch off, which you won't always do on a fruit tree. And um, so they're saying they're taking off the leader, stopping a bit of the, the big growth, keeping the tree at a certain size. So let's have a look around this one. Okay, looks pretty decent. There's a bit of inward facing growth that's coming off here. Just um, growing into the tree, this branch and that one as well. And we've pretty much pruned off the first tree that we started. So I'll show you that. This is the first tree that we started. And it's, uh, there, was, there was an area here where it was really dense and a bit clustered and we've uh, trimmed off the, the end of some of the new growth. So that's gonna encourage fruit spurs. And then there's the, the pile of wood that we've pruned off. And then this one is the second one that we were, ah, the pole saw. Have you finished with it? Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, and he's clean, giving it a clean. Uh, with the alcohol spray uh, before it's m m used on another tree. So this one where we showed you that damage, the damaged limb, remember, um, had a lot of vertical growth that's come off, a little bit of damage on the, on the edges, and then um, some inward facing wood that's come out. And so we're spending a good hour on each tree. It can take, it can take quite a while um, to prune a fruit tree, especially if it's a big one and you want to do it right and you, you know, you're not really used to doing it and um, you just want to take your time and not make any bad decisions. So, um, th yeah, pretty much getting through three of these big trees and I think there's at least 10 or 12 of the big ones here. So we've got a lot more work to do. Looks good, doesn't it? Oh, we'll move on to a brand new tree. Oh yeah, do you want to pick one? Pick a big one. Just pick one, Karen. <laughs> Make it a good one. So he's cutting off um, downward growing wood. There's not too much downward wood. We don't really need it at all. Still a bit congested here as well. Oh, there's a, a downward one there. Uh, where it's really congested and there's just loads of branches growing into each other. I'm going to take them off. Even if they're not growing into each other, it's just congested. That's going to promote disease, so thin them out. That's just rubbing it. Cut back. So this looks much more open now. Mm. You can move your hand through the tree just about. I like Paul Daniels, didn't <laughs> There you go, so they've been decongesting it and um, thinning it out. Looking good, so we're move my gang are moving on to a new tree. Uh, I'll show you it. Upward growing branches. No. God, there's loads going on here, isn't it? Mm. I think I need little cutters because look, we've got lots of broken dead, lots of damage. Look. Oh yeah, lots of broken and. I'll go and get little cutters. I think. Yeah. And we've got a lot of upward growing. Dead, diseased, and dying. I'll go and get. Yeah. So that's damaged. This is damaged. So that was originally like that, and then it's sort of broken. Um, yeah, any dead, any dead material still on it, especially um, old fruit. You want to be taking that off. There's, there's um, some downward growth that's also crossing here, which is no good. So, especially where it's cross, where it's rubbing and crossed, touching. Nearly, I'm, I'm using the telescopic thing on that for a couple. How you doing this one? Yeah, I'm just going to go back and do the telescopic on a couple that I couldn't reach.
Yeah, that's, that's damaged. Yeah, a lot of damage on this. Probably um, just people walking around, moving in to try and climb it. Oh yeah, take that off. Might be one someone's tried to climb. Or when they're picking the apples, they're trying to get in there and pick the apples. A lot of new growth here, so in the middle of the tree. Really congested and yeah, loads of inward facing growth in the middle of this tree. See this? This needs to go. Just going straight through the middle of the tree. Oh wow, the sun, yeah, the, the, the blue sky is coming out and uh, we're starting to see the sunshine. So it's there. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna tackle this next tree and hopefully we've given you a, a few pointers and a few things to look at. We're gonna have our coffee break in a, in a few minutes. So I'm looking forward to that, getting a hot coffee in me. And uh, they made some sandwiches as well. So um, if you want to see um, more videos um, on the Fruit and Nut Village, check out the channel. I've got over 47 sites, 500 trees, 1,000 berry bushes and herbs and underplanting um, across three areas in Birmingham. So it's an amazing, amazing project to sort of get involved with. If you look at the website of Fruit and Nut Village, then um, you can see all the events that they put on um, throughout the, the year. It's about 20, 25 events a month so come and get involved and um, let us know how you get on all right we're just look, getting some higher branches out so you might want to have a look at this got the telescopic quite a long pole with basically a pair of loppers on the end yeah so if you just if you just slow that down a little bit Try and find out what's facing bud. Mm. That one's not too bad, this but one? it's the ones at the top that are very dominant. Oh, hang on. You've got it? It's very right, hard. Oh. We've got to do it as a two man job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you have Mark over there, that, you can do the pulling. There. So we need. Yeah. Are you having it? Apparently I am, yes, I'm going to give it a pull. Okay. Alright, we've got to go up to that big one here then. Right, so, it's new growth. Oh, look at this one here. Have a look on the older wood there. Yeah, it's quite fine. It's so hard to hold it. That's it this year's growth. Oh, these up there. Oh, it's moving. They're holding. Here we go, trimming the tips off. Some of the really high stuff. Never reach it otherwise. And they're on a, a new tree up here. So lots of lots of people busy. Um, someone's just joined us now, um, quite a way through the session. So we always have people dropping in whenever's convenient for them. Just been bent completely backwards. Yeah. So someone's had a go at this, haven't they? Maybe the dog's biting it or something. Bit of a damaged branch there coming out. Let's see where it's snapped. Oh, it's quite a thick one, isn't it? Two hands. <laughs> there we go. Well done. So we need to do like a viral, like a, a tree land, a branch landing on. <laughs> Someone climb up the tree. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'm getting on really well with the pruning. I'll just uh, show you a bit more of the activity. We'll go up to the other end.
It's not too bad this trim, it's had loads of work now, so there's things like this still. That we also don't want inward facing wood. And the whole point of what we're doing is trying to open up a goblet shape, which is what we're getting here really. So this one for instance, we probably should just get rid of that piece. Yeah. It's still facing the middle of the tree. And right at the bottom? Yeah, right to the base, but not, not removing the collar. It's like a little healing collar when it comes back. So maybe time. just come over this one. Yeah. Yeah. I can hold it to Find a good way in. So where are we going? It's starting to look quite good, this tree. Go on this one here. It's here, yeah. So here? I would take that. Uh, yeah, you can see there's a little collar, a bit low down actually. So this, this is the collar then. There's a little collar, and if you cut just above the collar, that's like that. the perfect place. Yeah. That's where we want you to do it. Uh, Good stuff. Right. I don't know if I'm happy about it. See that bit in the okay. middle? So you've got these two bits. Yeah. yeah. And this you've one? That one. Yeah. The one in the middle. That one there. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I'm getting this stuck by the actual. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're all by a board. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't like this one that's not coming down. Yeah. It's coming in anyway. Yeah, but I want it right back. Um, yeah, you can take that off. It's not really doing anything. Yeah, close to the uh, stem as possible. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go on this newer tree, there'll be a bit more to do. That that looks okay, like it's nearly good. finished. So we'll just have a little walk around uh, and see if there's anything obvious. Here we go. See anything down there? Crossing? Crossing, yep. So do I want to take off this one because it's a shorter one? Or yeah. Uh, yeah, that is the question. Totally up to you. <laughs> Six and two threes, I think. Yeah, there seems more you don't see here, buds so on this maybe, more, more potential. Yeah, yeah, sounds like good logic. So do I go here? Yep. Yeah. And is that the right, right way around or the other way around? Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, good. Um, then if we have another look around, see if anything... Uh, okay. There you go. It's just um, going to be rubbing on there. That's going to promote yeah. disease. Yeah. Take it back a little bit. Yep. Oh, look. See this? Yep. That's no good. It's just growing out from the middle of the tree. So, all the way? Yeah, I'd take it all the way off. Well then. Oh look, there's a one here. See yep. that crossing, that's rubbing, touching each other. Now, so we'll resolve that. Uh, the same really. Can I take this one off? Well, what you can do, because there's oh, some there's in. some fruit spurs here, yeah. you can just take it back to there. And then that'll stop it rubbing and stops any sort of disease happening. So that's a really good way of just starting. If you're not 100% sure what you're doing, just have a little walk around, see anything obvious. And then um, just snip bits off and have a go.